What's up, gamers? Dreamcast guy here, talking today about the state of Xbox because it's kind of just shocking to explain this, but there is a series of statements that have come out in the last few hours from Phil Spencer, the head of Xbox, saying that if they're not able to actually make Xbox as a brand way more profitable by 2027, they're going to quit not just developing spinoffs or main party stuff. They're actually just saying that if Game Pass does not completely explode by 2027, Xbox is threatening to quit the industry. They're going to stop making games. They're going to stop making consoles. They're going to stop making anything. And I want to discuss this because it is a very strange circumstance. Now, I do want to say this right up front. I like my Xbox. I've got a Series X. I like my PlayStation 5. But I feel like both of these consoles are better because of the competition. The idea of Xbox completely dying off, I think, is going to hurt the industry. And I hope that that does not come to pass, especially it would be extra bizarre if this is the final generation of Xbox. But let's take a look at his statements and analyze why these numbers are insane. Hope you're having a great day. If you could like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. So here we go. Phil Spencer says that Xbox will leave the gaming industry if Game Pass doesn't grow enough by 2027. I can safely say that if we do not make more progress of this off of console, we would exit the gaming business. Now, you're probably thinking, oh, this is just some clickbait article. It's headlines out of context. But what's actually crazy is I'm going to show you the full statement. A lot of people are basically saying, it's time to replace Phil Spencer. People are mad that he's even saying this. Someone needs to be out here making high quality games. But what's insane is that it's actually completely legit. So yesterday they released this big uh, title card graph thing that happened during the FTC hearings just a couple months ago here. Uh, obviously, Microsoft is attempting to buy Activision Blizzard for $70 billion, and they're getting a lot of, you know, sort of legal pushback. Basically, people worried that this will become a monopoly or damage the industry. And in this, Phil Spencer essentially said that this is all just an effort to grow Game Pass. These are the exact direct words of Phil Spencer talking about this slide where he's essentially saying that they need to actually grow Game Pass by any cost or they're just going to stop making stuff at all. I can safely say that if we do not make more progress off console, we would exit the gaming business. If this were the outcome, we would, I don't believe we'd still be in the business. A majority of our customers are found off of our own hardware, essentially saying that, hey, Xbox Game Pass is now on PC, it's on phones, it's on cloud. All of that is profitable. It's all one big bubble. I would hope by earlier than 2030. So when you ask if I'd agree with this chart, that the light green and blue, depending on what colors you see here, are much larger than much earlier, I would say that if by fiscal year 2026 or 2027, we should be in that position or I'd have to make a different decision with the business. So he's speaking a bit of business jargon, but they're really saying here, as you can see, this is where they predict the next console generation is going to be. Here's uh, the mid-gen console refreshes. Right now, they're saying that there's about between 25 million and about like 30 million subscribers on Game Pass. They want to have... 100 million subscribers on Game Pass by 2027, or they're pretty much just going to quit making games. This statement is 100% real and it's truthful. I mean, this was Phil Spencer on the stand of the FTC trial, basically trying to defend the state of Xbox, the path of Xbox, and the brand of Xbox to say, hey, we deserve to buy Call of Duty. Now, some people are understandably a bit annoyed by this, of the fact that they keep buying stuff up. Right now, they're trying to buy Activision Blizzard for $70 billion, but previously, they've bought stuff like Rare. 
obviously Microsoft's bought things like Arcane and id and Bethesda and now they're trying to own Call of Duty and World of Warcraft and Diablo it feels like Microsoft the major criticism that a lot of haters have is the fact that they buy instead of create they're not very good at managing their studios they just keep scooping stuff up because they want to make Game Pass as big and lucrative as possible and what's interesting is that there's this other statement that also came out yesterday via an email which showed the fact that phil spencer isn't happy with how few games are coming out he is straight up saying so obviously here's phil spencer himself doing his slightly grumpy face that always makes me laugh and he said straight up hey we have noticed halo infinite came out on december 8th right now we have 16 months with zero big games on our platform. This is really a disaster situation for us, given all we have invested in our studios, in our Game Pass content. We need to learn from this and plan a build forward. This is literally him saying that Game Pass is not growing fast enough. I think from some of the leaked numbers, it seems like Game Pass has really stagnated. Now, I'm sure you could say, okay, well, we have some leaked numbers about PlayStation Plus Premium. That has stagnated as well. And I think that's definitely correct. PlayStation's PlayStation Plus stuff, they just jacked up the price as well. I made a video roasting that. But it seems weird that Game Pass is what Microsoft is totally putting all their eggs in this basket. They want to become a subscription service. They want to make it where you just pay your Xbox fee. Whereas Sony and Nintendo, they're still about that upfront cost, about getting you to buy a game that's, you know, $60, you play it, you beat it, you love it, and then you move on. You buy the next $60 or $70 game. They're still on the classic business model. They are very fixated on essentially trying to get people to subscribe to this and stay subscribed to this for years at a time. And I just don't know if that's going to be a success. It, it just seems really weird to me that right now we know for a fact that Xbox is giving up on discs. They're trying to make an all digital console. This is their next console that's also been leaked and it's adorably all digital. A lot of people are instantly mad about this because discless consoles mean that you can never buy a secondhand game. You can't borrow games. You can't buy a game from a store. You can't resell your games. You have to update your firmware regularly and greet a new terms of service. You're unable to refuse game updates and patches. The servers might go down is the least of your issues. Firmware updates for games regularly shoehorn in advertisements, tracking microtransactions into games and platforms way after the fact. And if you refuse to update it, you lose your access to the library. I think it's interesting that people are actually breaking down the fact that Game Pass has extra drawbacks that people sometimes don't consider. This isn't just, oh, I'm not excited for Halo. Oh, I'm not excited for Forza. Oh, you know, I'm not super hyped about the idea of Starfield. I feel like all of that is kind of in the backseat with the idea that, honestly, Xbox never wants you to own your games. They want you to stay subscribed forever. Instead of just buying two or three good games a year, which is seemingly what the general model is for PlayStation. PlayStation tries to drop three or four $70 games a year, and that's how they make their money off you, along with, of course, accessories and limited edition controllers and stuff like that. Right now, they're trying to get you to just stay part of the Game Pass ecosystem in between major releases. I think it's interesting because I think their idea was to try and aim for the cheapest demographic. People that instead of wanting to buy a $500 PlayStation 5 and $70 games, they're like, okay, we'll sell you a $300 console, which is the Xbox Series S, and then we'll just get you to subscribe to Game Pass for like $15 a month. And so in the long run, they would out-profit the competition. I think this plan is falling apart. It's interesting to me that 75% of Xbox owners are Xbox Series S owners. I'll be honest, this is staggering to me. I 100% assumed, and I will admit that this was an ignorant assumption, 
I 100% assumed that most people had an Xbox Series X and the S's were the minority. Whereas in this case, it's completely the opposite. I think Xbox made a bad gamble. There's a lot of extraneous factors, you know, bad release dates, delays, they happen. Lack of crunch, lack of quality. I do think games like Redfall coming out completely freaking busted and Phil Spencer having to do an actual apology tour about it. I think that kind of stuff hurts the Xbox brand very permanently, but now they're just in an odd spot. 2027 is four years away. I don't think there's any way they're possibly going to hit their own expected metrics in less than a half decade. I think really Xbox as it currently exists is going to have to change. I still think that if they're unable to hit 100 million Game Pass subscribers, which seems quite impossible if I'm being honest, if they don't hit that by 2027, I think the Xbox brand is going to evolve. I think they're just going to make Xbox games third party. You're going to be playing Halo and Gears of War and Forza on your PlayStation, or you're going to be playing them on your Nintendo Switch via the cloud. I don't think that Xbox as a brand can continue in its current format with these spaced out games, with these low console sales. Even now, console sales are still somehow dropping even lower Xbox is the underdog of all underdogs. But what do you guys think about it? Are you worried about the death of Xbox? Is it weird to watch such a big brand completely get tanked? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a big old thumbs up, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. And please keep dreaming. Oh man, I'm sure this comment section is going to be chill as hell. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.